Hi everybody, my name is Claire, if you don't know me already, and today I'm going to tell you my cancer story. I have a little like timeline of everything that happened before I found out on my phone, so if I'm looking down, that's why. So I was diagnosed with Hodgkin's lymphoma, stage 2B, I believe they said, in August of 2022, this past year, and I have one more treatment left, which is next week, February 1st be exact and yes somehow I still have hair the eyebrows though not so much so where do we all begin my mom likes to go all the way back to the root canal that I got in like 2015 or something when I was 13 and this tooth right there it's very dead then I got my wisdom teeth out July of 2020 then I had my appendix taken out emergency that was absolutely horrible then a month later i got COVID, and that was the day that i was supposed to literally go to my old college for volleyball preseason because i was a d1 athlete before everything then i'd say either august or definitely october of 2020 i started itching and having really bad anxiety i couldn't sleep like i would literally scratch to where i scratched the skin off of my feet and this itch wasn't just like any itch like i wouldn't stop like i'd be half asleep and be itching also, my skin would burn after I took a shower. So I'm living like this for a year until I notice anything drastic. I started losing weight, which I think I put on a little weight at first, and then I started losing it that summer in 2021. Then I started having yeast infections over and over and over again. And I'm not like a dirty girl, I have a boyfriend. So it wasn't because of that. And they just kept recurring and recurring. No matter how much Fluconzole I took, I kept getting them. And then I started having stomach issues and bowel issues. Like I was seeing blood and mucus in my poop, which is not normal. So I thought that something was wrong going on there. So I got a colonoscopy done at the end of 2021 and nothing. And I mean, I was begging at this point for it to be something because I just wanted to know what was wrong. So they treated me for ulcerative colitis and gave me the, the suppositories. And those did help me, but overall it still kept happening. Then some point I got started on Trazodone and Trentalex. Trentalex is for anxiety and Trazodone is for sleep. And I mean, the trazodone was nice because I could not sleep. I started having insomnia. And I mean, I would just stare blank, like in the blank pitch dark for hours upon hours. And then in March, I got my blood work done because you're we like, what, what's going on here? Like something is happening. And I had lost 35 pounds. So I was down to like 105 from 140 after I left my volleyball school, which was a little on the heavier side for me. My blood work showed that somehow I had EBV virus, which is linked to cancer or my specific cancer we thought it could have been long covid so i went to the long covid clinic and the lady practically told me that we were stupid and nothing was wrong with me and she probably was just like your kid is anorexic or she has insomnia or she has anxiety or all these things but i'd never had anxiety in my life so obviously something was wrong i had a rash at one point on my legs and i started having night sweats every night like i would sleep on one side of the bed sweat make it soaked and then move to the other side of the bed and do the same thing over and over again all night just switching sides of the bed i went to a sleep clinic because like i said i literally became an insomniac and the man i saw diagnosed me with insomnia disorder with delayed sleep phase disorder he said i'd had this when i was 14 and it progressed and got into insomnia which i did used to have sleep problems and now it's a lot better but who knows. I keep losing weight, I'm home for the summer, and I'm shoving my face with food, like protein shakes, like crying because I was not hungry, and crying because I, no matter what I did, I wouldn't gain weight. So many people thought that I wasn't eating, which is awesome that people care about me, and were checking in on me like that and stuff, but it sucked because I just had to, it's like people think you're lying, and you're like, begging to show that you're not lying and it's impossible for you to prove them wrong i guess so then here's the big to where we found out my friend riley her mom and dad own a medical clinic type place and they do blood work and riley was like my mom said like she'd do it for free like come in do your blood work and we have a doctor here that's totally awesome and figures everything out at this point i'm kind of worried about money like i didn't want to have to pay for more blood work or ask my parents to do all this because they thought I was anorexic, which is, or not eating, which is fair because who knows? I was at college, they didn't know what I was doing, so on. So I get my blood work done and it comes back and we talk about it. So there were a lot of things that were off, but he thought that I had hyperthyroidism at first. 
or some type of thyroid issue. There were four things on my blood work that were high. It was my white blood cell count, my neutrophil count, my C-reactive protein, and alkaline phosphate levels. And so the blood work did not tell that I had cancer. Like you can't look at blood work and say, oh, she has cancer. But so I told them that my heart would beat really, really fast, just like sitting there. And I didn't know if it was from anxiety or what, and that I had shortness of breath kind of. And he did something with my heart, he listened or whatever, and told me that I had a heart murmur. And at this point, I really didn't know what a heart murmur was, so I, like, start crying. And this guy's, like, very nonchalant, so he's not trying to make me upset or scare me, but that's what happened. And so when I said I had shortness of breath, he ordered a chest x-ray. And then, not sure if it was a couple of days later, came back and there was a mass in between my heart and my lungs. And me and my sister were out in Oldham County looking for a new cat because we wanted to we were getting a new cat and a lady called me and just the tone of her voice was not good. She was like, um, we found something, there's a mass. And at this point I'm like, a mass? Like, what are you talking about? I had never thought that I had cancer in my mind. I'd looked up every single symptom and thought I had like a thyroid thing or so many other things and cancer just never came up. So that never crossed my mind. And so she said, we need you to come here right now and so I was like, Carly, we, we gotta go. We're driving there fast, my parents are meeting me there, I'm crying, freaking the F out. And so we get there, he shows us, then I got a CT scan, I think the same day, but it was very all immediate, we went somewhere near close that could do it, and it came back and said, like, considerations are lymphoma, and so that was when we practically found out, it was like August 10th or something. So then I had a biopsy, I think the next week, pretty much new right away. And then I got my port in and started chemo September 1st. The journey's been long and rough, but everybody has helped me so much along the way. And my family and friends really have been the best that they can be. I couldn't ask for anything more. I'm so grateful to even be able to have treatment and get better. But that life that I was living, like itching every day, wearing specific clothes so that I wouldn't itch, bringing a jacket to sit on in class, laying on a blanket to sleep at night. I couldn't even sleep on sh sheets. So I just couldn't thank God enough to be where I am right now. And if you're at the beginning of your journey or near the end or the middle, I wish you good luck and my prayers and love all sent your way. And you can do this. Much love. Thanks for watching.